everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Lexington scarf, which you can see here in front of you. Now this is a scarf that is worked in the Moroccan style uh, crochet stitch pattern. This is the fourth and final scarf in the 2022 Wonderful Hats Crochet Along. So if you've been following along with that, thank you very much. And uh, if this is your first time hearing this, check out my YouTube channel and my website, richtexturescrochet.com. We have been working hat and matching scarves uh, combinations for the last four weeks. So this is the final one. So this is a scarf we're working today. And uh, it's worked using the Moroccan stitch pattern, the Moroccan tile stitch pattern, and it features a textured edging on both ends. The finished scarf is about 8 by 60 inches laid flat, and I'd, I'll give you instructions for making it smaller or larger later on in the video. For the pattern today, you're going to need some worsted weight yarn. I have been using the Two of Wands Color Theory yarn on lionbrand.com. It's a worsted weight yarn. There's about 246 yards per ball. It's a little bit on the lighter side if you're looking for something to match it up with. You're going to need two balls of Peacock, as I have shown in my photo here. It's this darker green, and one ball of the ivory color to complete the scarf. Today in the tutorial, I'm going to be using the ivory along with this golden color uh, bee pollen just to make it a little bit easier to see. You're also going to need a 4.5 or a millimeter hook or a G7 millimeter hook and a copy of the free written pattern, which is on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. Links to these are in the description of this video. So thank you so much again for joining me while you're here. Don't forget to subscribe check out some of those other patterns, the scarf patterns and the matching beanie pattern. And I look forward to seeing your finished products. This scarf is worked in rows and we're going to be working starting at the shorter ends. So what you're going to do is take your color A, make a slip knot, and then work a foundation chain. Your foundation chain for the size scarf that I mentioned above is going to be uh, a total of 32 chains. If you would like to change the size of your scarf, you'll need a multiple of three stitches plus two for the foundation chain. Today we're going to chain 32. Once you have your foundation chain worked, you're going to begin row one by working a single crochet into the second chain from your hook, and then a single crochet into each stitch all the way across. At the end of your row one, you're going to chain one and turn your work. For row two, we're going to single crochet into the first stitch. The chain one does not count as a stitch. Chain two, skip the next two stitches and single crochet into your next stitch. Chain two, skip the next two stitches and single crochet into your next stitch. You're going to repeat this all the way across. At the end of your row two, this is what your work is going to look like. You have your chain two spaces, single crochets all the way across. What you're going to do is you're going to pull up the loop of your color A, just a little bit larger because you don't want to slip it out. If you're working with a more silky yarn or you're worried about the yarn slipping and losing this loop, 
then I recommend using a stitch marker or something just to keep it from pulling all the way through. You're then going to drop that color A and you're going to return to the start of your row 2. At the start of your row 2, in your first chain 2 space, you're going to join your color B with a slip stitch. And then chain 1. We're now using our new color B going to work a V stitch into the same chain 2 space. To work your V stitch, yarn over, insert your hook into that chain 2 space, yarn over and drop a loop or working a double crochet stitch, yarn over and pull through 2, yarn over and pull through 2. You're then going to chain 1 and work another double crochet just into that same chain 2 space. So when you work a double crochet, chain 1, double crochet, that is your V stitch. You're then going to skip the next single crochet and work a V-stitch in the next chain 2 space. So double crochet into the next chain 2 space, chain 1, and double crochet into the same chain 2 space. You're going to continue working V-stitches in your color B all the way across, working a V-stitch in each chain 2 space. When you come all the way across at the end of row 3, you've worked V stitches in each chain 2 space across, we're going to pick up our color A again. All you're going to do is put that color A on your hook and pull through. We're never going to be fastening off at the end of each row. In the, once we're all finished this, we're going to be working and edging over top of these loops. So make sure that you're not pulling too tight. You don't want it to bunch. Um, but at the same time, you're going to want these strands of yarn that fall up the side or that you carry up the side. You want them to be flush with the edges of your scarf. So you're then going to, with your color A, chain one. Turn your work. We're now going to work V stitches with our color A. This time working into the single crochet stitches that are two rows below. Working over top of the space between the V stitches just worked. So we're going to start by working our first V stitch in this first single crochet stitch. So yarn over, reach down into the single crochet two rows below, work a double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. You're then going to skip the next V stitch and in your next single crochet two rows below work a V stitch. Bring it, drawing up your loop to the height of your double crochet. So they're sort of long V stitches into the single crochet. You're going to repeat that all the way across working your final V stitch into that final single crochet. So I've worked all the way across here. I'm at the end of my row four, working a final V stitch into that final single crochet. Then once again, you're going to pull up that loop a little bit bigger because you don't want it to fall through. Return to the start of your row four. And with our color B down here, we're going to pick it up through the chain one, first chain one space. So just bring it up and pick it up on your hook and pull through. We're then going to chain one 
and with color B we're going to work a V stitch in each chain one space all the way across. So into this first chain one space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. We're just working straight V stitches into the space. Into the next chain one space, work a V stitch. Repeat this all the way across until you have come to your final chain one space where you will work your final V stitch. When you come all the way across at the end of row five, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to want to pick up your color A again. So what you're going to do with your color A is chain one just to make it a little bit taller so it doesn't bunch when it comes up through this tall V stitch. You're then going to pull that color A color through the loop of your color B and now chain three. Your chain three is like a double crochet stitch. Turn your work. We're going to continue working V stitches. This time our V stitches are being worked in between the two V stitches and in the space, into the space between the next two V stitches, two rows below. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook over top of the next space between the two V stitches into the space, two rows below between the next two V stitches and work a V stitch, bringing up your stitches to the height of your double crochet. Skipping the next V stitch, you're going to repeat into the space between the next two V stitches, two rows below, work one V stitch. You're going to repeat this all the way across. When you come all the way across at the end of your row six, you're going to work a double crochet into the final stitch, just like so. Then pull up a loop, a larger loop so it doesn't slip through. Go back to the beginning of your row and inserting your hook into the first chain one space, you want to slip stitch with your color B over into that chain one space. So really I'm just picking up my color B and pulling it through. You're then going to chain one just as you did before and once again working in each chain one space across with your color B, work a V stitch. So V stitch in the first chain one space, V stitch in the next chain one space, all the way across. When you come all the way across at the end of your row seven, you're going to place your color A on your hook, chain one just to bring it up a little bit higher, and then insert your hook again through that color B and pull your color A through. You're then going to chain one and turn your work. We're now going to work a V stitch. This time our first V stitch is going to be worked into the space between the double crochet and the V stitch two rows below. So yarn over, bring your hook down just into that space, yarn over, drop a loop to the height of the double crochet and work your double crochet stitch, chain one, double crochet in the same space. Skip your next V stitch and repeat into the uh, space between your next two V stitches, two rows below, insert your hook and work a V stitch. We're going to continue that all the way across.
When you come all the way across, you're working your final V-stitch into that final space between the double crochet and the next V-stitch two rows below. Pull up your loop and return to the start of that row. You're then going to pull your color B through that first chain one space. We're now going to, for row nine onward, we're going to repeat rows five, six, seven, and eight until your work from the beginning measures approximately 58 inches uh, long. Actually, sorry, 56 inches long. Once it measures about 56 inches, you're going to meet me back here and we're going to put the edging onto our scarf. Uh, and also, one more thing, uh, once you get to your 56 inches, you're going to finish off on a row 7 repeat. So finish off on a color B. Okay, so you'll have worked your full 56 inches. I'm just working a swatch here so that I can show you how to work the edging, but you're going to work your 56 inches and then end off on a row seven. What you're then going to do is with your color A, you're going to chain one just to bring it up a little bit higher and you're going to pull that loop through your color B. You can then go ahead and fasten off that color B. We're not going to use it anymore. So fasten off your color B. With your color A, chain one, and turn. We're now going to work a row of single crochet stitches and chain two stitches. Our single crochets, just like our V stitches before, are going to be worked into the stitches or spaces that are two, or into the, I guess, stitches, two rows below. So we're going to work our first single crochet just into the top of the double crochet that's two rows below. Pull up your single crochet to the height of a single crochet and complete. You're then going to chain two, skip the next V stitch, and into the top of the stitch two rows below. It doesn't matter if it's the first or the second, whichever one is uh, easily accessible there and that you can see you're going to insert your hook and work a single crochet stitch working over top of the space between the two V stitches. Repeat that all the way across. Chain two, skip the next V stitch, single crochet into the stitch two rows below. Repeat that all the way across. This is going to finish off, uh, almost finished off, the body of your scarf. When you come all the way across, you're going to end off with a chain two and then just a single crochet into the stitch two rows down below on the other side of that final V stitch. You're then going to chain one and turn your work. For our next row, we're simply going to work a single crochet into this first stitch and then two single crochet stitches into the chain two space. Single crochet into the next single crochet and two single crochets into the next chain two space. Repeat that all the way across, ending with a single crochet in your final stitch. Once you come all the way across at that final single crochet row, you're then going to fasten off and you can go ahead and weave in any ends. I'm not going to do that here in this video, but I'll leave you to weave in yours. What you're then going to do is with your color A, we're going to work an edging along this rough side. Now along this rough side, you will see that you have 
occasionally little strands of yarn that are coming up along the edges and we want to cover those up. So what you're going to do is with your uh, color A, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the corner and turn your work so that you're working along that short edge. And chain one. You're then going to work 188 single crochet stitches along this long edge. Now you are welcome to change the number of stitches you work. You'll just want to make note of it because you'll want to work the same number of stitches along the opposite side. So you're just working single crochet stitches at a comfortable distance all the way along this uh, long edge. As you are working, make sure that you are working over top of any of the strands of yarn that are running along this long edge of your scarf. So for instance, when I come here and I have this little white strand that kind of twists around, I want to place it under my hook to kind of hide it as best as I can. And then continue working again, continuing to work around that white or whatever color you're using all the way along. Again, you can change the number of stitches that you work. Just be sure to make note of how many stitches you're working along that long edge so that you can go ahead and work the same number afterward. Go all the way down to your final corner and you can then fasten off once again and weave in your end and then go ahead and repeat it for the second side. Once you have worked your two long edges we're going to finish off the shorter ends of our scarf. So into this corner stitch you're going to join your color A once again. and then chain three and this chain three counts as a double crochet stitch. Now when I joined, I joined it into the side of the single final single crochet along the edge. You're going to then work a double crochet into each stitch all the way across your shorter end. And this you are going to repeat for the second side as well. I'm just going to show you on the first side today, but you will repeat it for both ends. So double crochet into each stitch all the way across for row one of the short edging. At the end of your row one of your short edging, once again I just worked my final double crochet into the side of that a single crochet on my edging row. You're then going to chain one and turn your work. For row two we're going to half double crochet into the first stitch. Around the post of the next stitch you're going to work a front post double crochet. To work a front post double crochet yarn over, bring your hook in front of your work and insert your hook around the post from the front through to the back out through the front again of the next stitch, yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two more. That's your front post double crochet. You're then going to work a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. So yarn over, bring your hook in back of your work and insert your hook from the back through to the front, out through the back again of the next double crochet stitch, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. That's your back post double crochet. You're then going to work a front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch, followed by a back post double crochet around the post of the next, all the way across until you reach your final stitch. When you come all the way across, to your final stitch which is your chain three you're going to work a half double crochet into the top of your turning chain three 
chain one and turn your work. For the row three, we're going to work a half double crochet into that first stitch, followed by a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. Front post double crochet around the post of the next, and back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way across, finishing off with your half double crochet in your final stitch. When you come all the way across, you're going to finish off with a half double crochet into your final stitch, chain one, and turn. You're now going to finish off your scarf, or this end of your scarf, by working four more rows of front and back post double crochet stitches, half double crochet in the first and last stitch. So you're going to repeat your rows two and three of this short edging twice more for a total of four more rows. Once you have done that, you can fasten off, weave in your end. If it's only the first side that you're working, you can go ahead and repeat those rows for your second side, fasten off, weave in your ends, and that is the end of your Lexington scarf. So thank you so much for joining me, and once again I invite you to subscribe, take a look around, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye.